everyone, welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and this is my video podcast about all the crafty things that I like to do. So welcome if you're a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I'm so glad you could find some time to drop in and say hey. So today is Tuesday, April 28th of 2020 and this is episode 80. Yay, 80! Um... Yeah, I am, first of all, apparently really highlighting my wool storage system, which doesn't look super fantastic. So yeah, I, had to, I tidied up my craft room a little bit for a couple of reasons. Number one, this has been my home office and it needed a good tidy up. And number two, I had to find my fabric so I could make Michael and I face masks. So in that tidying up process, I grouped up all of my wool that needs to be washed or has already been washed that still needs to be processed. And I'm using cardboard boxes <laughs> at the moment, so they're just kind of piled up over there. But yeah, that's, um, I didn't mean for that to be like, boom, hello, see my storage. However, <laughs> learning opportunity. I am, uh, I'm a college math professor and I'm taking a class this quarter that's led by faculty for faculty and this is a class about educational equity and diversity and trying to create a classroom environment that promotes those things and uh, I just had a homework assignment that I finished up before recording, I had to watch a TED talk about vulnerability and then I had to write about it. And so here is me embracing um, feeling vulnerable by showing you that I'm not perfect and that um, I have a mess <laughs> and I'm not proud of it, but it's realistic. So that is me embracing that. And that's me making the best of this moment. <laughs> so I'm drinking out of, um, this is one of the mugs that my parents got me for my birthday last year. It has Mount Rainier. It's one of those color changing mugs with the temperature. So as I'm drinking my tea, the black is fading back in. Uh, but it has Mount Rainier. And uh, is that... Yeah, it looks like some docks and some boats, so probably around here in Tacoma. By the way, I'm coming to you from Tacoma, Washington. I don't know why I keep forgetting to say that, but I do. Maybe because when I lived in Texas, I wouldn't really include that in my intro. If I go back, I bet I do say Texas. But I'm not in Texas anymore, I'm in Washington. So anyway, it is Tuesday afternoon. So I am coming to you a day late. What? Um, Monday we had a informal department meeting. We've been having some of those sprinkled in in between required department meetings where we just kind of connect together virtually to share ideas, things that are working, things that are not working. Um, so I attended one of those on Monday and it was two hours long. Apparently we have a lot to say. <laughs> so uh, that meeting ate up two hours and then I went for my run and then I made dinner and there was just, oh, and I was trying to get grading done. Yes, I um, had exams to grade, first exam of the quarter um, for two of my classes, and then my third class has their first exam this week. Um, so it's that first exam time of the quarter and that always comes with more grading. So yes, I stayed up. I stayed up until 9.30 p.m grading exams. No, it wasn't the exams, it was homework. 
after I got done grading the exams, I had homework for another class. It's all blending together. Grading is grading. Anyway, it's probably my least favorite part of the job because it is. It's time consuming. <laughs> really important, but not as fun as having discussions with the students. So anyway, that's enough about work. I am really fortunate. This is me giving an acknowledgement that I am really fortunate that I am able to work through this crisis and that I have a career that is essential and I'm able to work from home for that essential job function. So um, I'm really, really fortunate in this respect and I acknowledge that not everyone is under these same circumstances and that this could be a really tough time for you. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I want this to be a happy place. So if you are feeling cooped up, like you might start getting a bit of cabin fever, hopefully I can help uh, take you out of there and bring you into my home in Tacoma, Washington. So where I have messy wool organization schemes, whatever. I'm being realistic. So, um, yeah, this is my podcast about crafty things. So, um, let me share with you first, um, at the top of the episode, the Dear Heart House Sock Knit Along is ending this week on Thursday, April 30th. The knit along, uh, ends. It's a participation based knit along. So you don't even have to finish your pair of socks. All I ask is that you cast on the waxing and waning pattern that I've designed, excuse me, and uh, post progress pictures in the Ravelry thread and on Instagram. So uh, yeah, I will randomly be choosing winners on Friday, one from Ravelry and one from Instagram. Although I did check Instagram again and no one has used the hashtag except me. So. If that is still the case, then I will choose two winners from Ravelry if no one participates on Instagram. Because I have two prizes, so yeah. Or you could quickly get in and use the hashtag and be the only one who has used the hashtag and be a winner. Up to you. Um, but yes, I have two prizes to give away, so I will be drawing winners on Friday, and then I will be working with those couple of people to sort out shipping dates and, um, whatnot. So, there we go. Get your posts in if you haven't yet. Uh, I have provided a link down in this description box below to the Ravelry, um, to our group on Ravelry where I'm hosting that knit along. I have also put down below in the description box the hashtag you can use on Instagram for this knit along. Okay, there. So I've decided um, it's a bit more inclusive and easier to just post things down below in the description box. So if you are not a Ravelry user, you don't have to go to Ravelry to see show notes. You can just see them down in the description box below. So links are going to be provided down there from now on instead of over on Ravelry. It's easier for me and hopefully easier for you. So let me share with you the knitting that I have been working on. Um, yeah, I have a project out right here. Actually, I was working on it earlier. I cast on a, another pair of socks. Um, I cast these on yesterday during that two hour meeting because I needed t to do something. <laughs> um, these virtual meetings are a little difficult in that um, with a little bit of lag the conversation it, it's different than in person so anyway 
I cast on these socks yesterday during a meeting. Everyone could see that I was knitting. I was not being secretive about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I cast these on. I have no idea where the yarn label is, but I am pretty sure this is um, Premier Yarns Serenity Sock. And since I have misplaced the label, I don't know the colorway name, but it has this nice medium gray color in between different shades of blue. And it looks like it's going to be like there are three stripes here. I do three, three stripes here of this really pretty uh, cerulean teal kind of color. And then here I've got a couple of stripes in here of this more like aqua color and then and up at the top here is this nice sky blue color um, and it looks like there's also a like a periwinkle blue that's coming up so I think it's gonna be three stripes of blue then three stripes of another blue three stripes of another and in between each of those is this medium gray but yeah I cast these on yesterday and I think I'm going to be, uh, these are going to be a gift, I think, probably for my mom. So uh, I just needed a plain um, stockinette stitch sock to work on. Um, excuse me, just to keep my fingers moving and keep me from getting too bored. Uh, and so that's what I have going. I'm using US size one knitting needles. These are, I've got two 16 inch circular needles. Um, it's just probably my favorite method. And these are knitting needles from Knit Picks. They have this uh, plum colored cord to them. Really nice, I like them. And I've got 64 stitches. I did two by two ribbing on the cuff for 20 rounds. Now I'm gonna do plain stockinette. And I'll probably do a heel flap and gusset. Yeah, I think I'll do a heel flap and gusset for this one. So yeah, I just cast those on. And the reason I cast these on, I already have a plain stockinette stitch sock going. would be right here in this bag. I love this bag. Okay, this is one of mine. <laughs> right? I need it. I got the sewing machine out to make face masks. Um, and I would really start to like to make bags again. Um, but yeah, finding the time. Uh, but yeah, it's got this um, wood pattern with the forest animals and I just love the whole cabin in the woods aesthetic and I can't wait for us to own a home one day and be able to create that. So <laughs> we are renters and I just can't invest in things like that to fit a space because when you move it just doesn't always work. So anyway, tangents. I already have a stockinette stitch sock on the needles. I have finished this first one, almost. I have to Kitchener stitch the clo the clothes. I have to Kitchener stitch the toe closed. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. Uh, but yeah, this is, um, I'm making socks for my husband and this is out of Patton's Croy. The main color is Cascade and the heel toe and cuff are in gray marl and it's cuff down two by two ribbing it, this one has a short row heel uh, and just go to favorite I just love that socks are like one of my go-to things but uh, yeah I really like this uh, cascade color it's really pretty so <laughs> the reason why I cast on this other sock is because I'm still waiting for my Joanne order to get filled. So I only bought one ball of this color 
And at first I was gonna make shorty socks and, and knit a pair out of this one ball. And then I decided um, after doing a little bit of a sock inventory that Michael actually could use some more tall socks um, for hiking because the short socks are, are just a little too short to wear in his hiking boots and then blisters. So I thought, you know, he could really use um, a few more pair that are taller for when we can finally go backpacking um, this summer. So um, fingers crossed that that will be a realistic thing this summer. Um, if not, the next summer. So yeah, I, um, I'm waiting. I placed an order using the Joanne app and I placed it for pickup, curbside pickup. And I got an email right away saying, we're getting your order ready, but don't come to the store yet. Don't come until we actually have your order ready. And that was like a week ago. So I went on the website to check and they said, yeah, we're trying to keep up and we're being slow because of things that are happening. Um, so please be patient with us. So I don't know how long I should be waiting because the coupon that I used is not as good as the coupon that's available right now. And I kind of want to just cancel the order and reorder with this new coupon and it would be even cheaper. And But then how much longer will I have to wait for that other thing? Whatever. I have no shortage of yarn. It's not like I'm really in that big of a hurry. So I figure if my order falls through the cracks, whatever, not a big deal. Um, I can always go in the store at some point and get it later. But anyway, so I am on hold with this project until I can get that other ball of yarn. So that's why I cast on this other sock so that I would still have a plain vanilla sock to work on. So that's my sock story. Don't worry, I have also worked on my sweater. Mm -hmm. So I'm knitting Dark Water by Jennifer Steingass. And I found my yarn labels and put them in this bag when I was cleaning this room. <laughs> Can't find that one because I cast it on yesterday. Um, yeah, so I'm using Cloudborn Fibers Highland Fingering in Stormy Skies and Gray Heather. So this is yarn from Blueprint, formerly known as Craftsy. Um, and I'm still on the Colorwork Yoke. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah, so I'm still working on it. Um, kind of slow and I was going to change this this needle out because the cable is only 32 inches and I think it's 32 and I thought I had a 40 inch US size 5 but I don't and so I went into my interchangeable needle set but the size five needle tips don't screw on very well to the 40 inch cable. Like something is off with the thread and it just one side just doesn't screw on very well. And I would constantly be, the yarn would be catching on those threads from the, the twist on and it would just, it would just cut through the yarn. It was, it would be atrocious. Um, so that's not gonna work. So I'm stuck on these smaller, the smaller cable here. So the work is very scrunched up, which makes me sad because I like to marvel at the progress of, of things that I'm making. And 
while I can appreciate it, it would be really nice if I could just spread this out and be like, oh, look at it, it's growing. But it just looks like a blob. So <laughs> right now it's like, oh, it looks like a slightly larger blob. Yay. Not quite the same effect. So that's what I'm dealing with. However, I think it's coming along nicely. Um, the row, the rounds are long, so this isn't like a fast project for me. And um, I do have to pay attention to the color work. There are some rounds where I have to catch floats, and so I just have to remember to do that. So it's a little more thinking than just the mindless socks I have over there, which is why I need mindless socks to help me. But um, yeah, so I am a little bit farther than last time. I think last time I had like the second chevron um, finish, so I've, I've done a little bit more here. I think I'm about, as far as number of rounds, I am, dropping stitches, I am halfway through the color work chart. So we're getting there. But yeah, I am really excited and I was a little worried about the feel of this yarn at first, but the more and more I work with it, the more and more I like it. So I was worried that it would be a little irritating. Um, but as far as my hands and my arms go, it's going to be fine. Time will tell about the neck. Um, I do have a really sensitive neck and I do have allergies, so um, I tend to get red right here first for any other place. It's all right here. Um, so once I can try this on, that will let me know how this will go, but I think it'll be fine. What I'm not going to do right now is rub this all over my neck while filming in case it does turn super red. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but yeah, so that is coming along. And now, I actually do want to share with you the design that I'm working on. So I posted a little teaser pic on Instagram on my D Hard House account because it's a design for D Hard House. Um, and you can't really see much of the hat because not much progress was made on that. So not really many spoilers um but <laughs> so last week i mentioned that i was getting a head start on fall designs and uh, i wasn't quite ready to show you my progress and <laughs> it was for good reason because i wasn't fully confident in the design and so i did end up ripping it out and starting over again which happens. Uh, the frustrating part, I guess a couple frustrating parts of that is that I had previously ripped it out and started over three times already and I had made so much progress I didn't want to rip it out. But I love the yarn so much and the color that I didn't want to um, have it tied up in a hat I wasn't 100% in love with. So I decided rip it out and make a hat you will be 100% happy about. So that's what I did. So I ripped it out, modified the things in the pattern that I wasn't happy with to make them better. And I cast on again. And now I want to show you my progress. So um, like I said, this is a fall design, so to give me inspiration, I do have this in a fall bag. <laughs> Just to remind me, this is a fall design, so I need to keep that in mind. While it is spring right now, I need to channel pumpkin spice and lattes. So, <laughs> so I have um, one of my fall bags to help me with that. So, first of all, the color. I don't know how well that is reading on screen, but uh, it is this gorgeous 
rust color. I just love it. And I've just tangled up the yarn ball. There we go. So this is a hat. This is going to be for my, um, a part of my Give Thanks hat collection for fall 2020. And this will be, I guess, the first hat, or at least the first hat I'm adding. We'll see how the release goes. But um, I'm going to do, uh, this is a fingering weight hat with cable work. And uh, the yarn I'm using is Malabrigo. Yeah. I forget the name of the weight of the yarn, but it's the fingering weight. It is ply, plied yarn. It's not a, it's not singles. And um, yeah, it's just this beautiful rust color. So, uh, so I'm doing some cable work around here and I'm just, I'm just loving it. So my previous version was a little too small and um, just didn't quite work. So I changed it and I'm really happy that I did. Uh, I would try it on for you thus far, but no need. So yeah, I'm, excuse me, happy enough with it now to be willing to share it. So this is really cool. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm working on for designs. I'm trying to get head start because I need it. <laughs> I need it. So yeah, that's fun. Really fun. Um, I haven't, I haven't made fingering weight hats before. So figuring out how many stitches to cast on in the first place was a little tricky. And honestly, that's why I had to rip out this project three times before is because I had too many and then I had too few and then I thought I had it just right, but it was still too few. And finally, I've gotten there. So that's good. But uh, yeah, just a part of the designing process, right, is figuring that out. So I have that going on the needles as well. So I have gone from <laughs> having only two works in progress to now having one, two, three, four, five works in progress um, just for knitting. I did get a little bit of spinning done since the last time I spoke with you. I have a bobbin down on the spinning wheel right now that has um, one of the two plies on it. I still need to spin up the second ply and then ply them. Uh, but yeah, I am getting through that coop worth and <laughs> I'm really excited. I have over in this bin right here with all that gray yarn. So the darker gray here is the coop worth that I'm spinning for a sweater. And then next to it is some uh, merino that I'm spinning on my Turkish drop spindle. So those are my... Um, spinning projects in process. Yeah. Anyway. I am loving that. Uh, yeah, so I'm definitely done uh, for, <laughs> for now <laughs> perusing the internet for more wool because you can see I'm, I'm set. Like, I have two big bags over there full of Shetland and Rambouillet and I don't need any more in storage right now because that's plenty and I'm really happy with what I have. Um, I want to actually use it and go through it and that'll be really fun. So uh, in other news, so other things going on that aren't um, necessarily crafty related. So I heard on the news this morning uh, that in the state of Washington, 
the governor is going to be opening up the state parks in about a week or so. And that is definitely very exciting because I would like to reinstate <laughs> my state parks segment. I have been unable to go and visit and film because they have been closed and if you're caught in areas that are closed you could get um, fined or other criminal repercussions so <laughs> just haven't been able to do that in fact uh, yesterday was it yesterday maybe it was Sunday I think it was Sunday, um, Michael and I went to go see what city parks we could go to because I had heard on the news that some, some places were going to be opening up their city parks again. Unfortunately, um, that wasn't really around here. So there were closed signs all over and even though the entrances where you can just walk in weren't blocked off. The sign said um, we don't have enough resources to physically barricade every single entrance, um, but you need to respect this closure, um, something along those lines. And despite that, we saw people walking around in those parks. We just, um, since they had gated off the parking spaces and we were driving to these spots where you're like, well, <laughs> I mean, we can't bark in front of this gate. That's a no-no. Um, however, there's this trail near our house. It's about a mile away from our house and it's an interurban trail and that wasn't closed. So, we parked at one of the trailheads, which had other vehicles parked at it, and we went for a little walk with Marjorie on this trail. Because um, it is different walking than walking on the side of the road. I live in a community where we don't have... Um, it's just really not set up for pedestrians. There's hills and curves, and there's no sidewalk. A lot of the road doesn't even have a shoulder to walk like you have to walk in the road and it's it's just not set up for foot traffic. Uh, so when we're walking with Marjorie we have to keep her on a short leash and constantly be on the lookout for traffic and so it's just a more relaxed walking experience to be able to go do that in a park or on a trail because um, I can look around and enjoy the scenery and not wonder is a quiet car sneaking up behind me and they're not paying attention and could potentially just kill us. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, no, a lot of, a lot of people speed on our road. Uh, the speed limit is 30 and you can on the straight parts drive 50 and be fine. Like as far as handling your vehicle, However, the speed limit is not 50, it is 30. So <laughs> getting a hit by a car at 50, very different than at 30. And more importantly, the stopping capabilities. So, um, so we did try that out, but what I'm trying to say is I hope in the near future that I'll be able to include state parks on the podcast again. However, I can't make that promise because I don't know all the details of the state parks reopening. I don't know if it's going to be a soft opening or if certain ones are opening while others are staying closed or are they going to have someone there like counting how many people come in and so, um, so I don't know those details yet. but. I'm happy to hear that news. It gives me hope and gives me something to look forward to. I am getting a little bit of cabin fever myself, so <laughs> I will be very happy to be able to go out on little mini adventures, even if we just go revisit some of the state parks we've already been to. It'll be nice to show them in the spring 
instead of in the fall slash winter. So um, even if that happens, because we've got a state park that's only a couple miles away, Dash Point State Park, and um, I wouldn't mind just going there again. So actually, I don't know. I think I shared some pictures with you guys, but um, I could get some video this time. So we'll see. We'll see. But the big concern that I've been hearing about in the media is people traveling far distances and then sharing germs that were once localized now just mixy mashy. So the governor may just say you can only visit a state park if it's in this vicinity of your home. I don't know. Uh, so further details to come, hopefully. Alrighty, so that's all I have for this week's episode. A couple of socks, a hat, and a sweater, and some spinning that's in progress. I'm hoping to have my outdoor adventure segment back, but fingers crossed on that one. And um, anyway, in the meantime, until I see you next week, I hope that you enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in next week's episode.